Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Classic. In the last episode we completed Vanilla Dome's secret path that led up to Fortress, which was controlled by Reznor. In this episode, oh, and we also came back down and conquered the Red Switch Palace. In this episode we're going to continue Vanilla Dome into World 3... That's... Terrible phrasing. We're going to continue World 3 through Vanilla Dome and do one stage of World 4, and I'm going to explain why when we get to World 4. Just know that we're going to conquer Lemmy's Castle and do a stage afterwards. So we've already done World this stage before in, epi in the previous episode when we were dealing with the secret exit. Water stages are okay, sometimes they're fun. This one is a good example of a good fun water stage because it's not just water, it is a mix of the two. The only thing I don't like about it is how flat the water looks. In other water stages you'll notice that the water has a sort of background to it. Meanwhile this stage, it's, it's just a flat blue. And it's not even like a nice clean blue, it's like a soft sky blue, and it's... Some people might find it appealing, it's it's a little weird to me. So... I do love this world and this game. I think Super Mario World is the only one where they took World 3 and did a cave concept behind it. Where, basically what I mean is, in other Mario games, World 3 is not just a cave world. That is super strange. Did I get hit by Charge and Chuck and got the mushroom after? That's what it looked like what happened. I'm um, sorry, got distracted there. In um, other Mario games, World 3 is usually depicted as the island stage, or the water stage, or the... The... I'm trying to think of other World 3 stages, the ice stage. But in this game, they made it into the cave stage, which is super cool. I think it's really fun and awesome. It's a unique idea, and I think that they should go... Not go back and do this, otherwise it wouldn't be such a unique idea. But I think they need to look at reinventing the World 3 concept. Even this game's World 2 was the Plains stage, and World 1 was the Island stage, but you wouldn't really notice that. I know there is a secret in this pile of blocks somewhere. There it is. Okay, what is up here? Huh. Basically nothing. Basically nothing. Absolutely nothing, actually. It got me around some of the obstacles that were up ahead. So, this ghost house isn't like puzzle box ghost houses that we've seen in the past, where you have to navigate the, the stage and find all, find all of the exits and escape the mansion. This one's a bit more linear, and that's fine. Not every ghost house has to follow the theme of a, uh, of a puzzle box. In addition, in an earlier episode, I believe I mentioned that there are ghost houses that don't have multiple exits, and this is the first instance of a ghost house without a secondary exit. You kind of can tell with the map if there's going to be a secret exit or not. In this particular one, it's on a cliffside, the cliff goes around, so it's quite obvious on this one that there's only one exit, but in other stages where there more open and there's more paths to navigate, it's more obvious that there are secret exits hidden. The 
this is another one of my favorite stages where you are introduced to a semi-auto scrolling stage. The fastest you can go is the speed of these skull rafts. Because you can't fly through the stage, there, there's these block walls here that just prevent you from doing that. And it's kind of a unique idea in that you are limited to a small platform and you have to be able to avoid the obstacles to get through the rest of the stage. And then there is, of course, the discussion I have to have about these blargs, which are the lava creatures you see jumping out at me. And the first time I saw them, I thought they were lava dragons. I knew their names were blargs. But I thought that they were like this really, really um, dangerous lava dragons that live in the molten rock. Or not rock, molten. Technically, molten lava still is the same thing. But lived in this liquid fire and when I saw what they did in Super Mario Galaxy where they kind of made it into this sluggy sluggy slime monster that rises out of the lava it it took away that appeal that like that thing definitely looks like a dragon or like a, a fire Yoshi or something it does not look like it should be a slug or a... Not a slug, a slime creature. But, I mean, that's just my opinion. Obviously, Nintendo does character redesigns and creature redesigns all the time. Look at the... Um, Koopalings, for example. Iggy is depicted with rainbow hair. And a... Yellow shell, now? when in this game he was depicted with a blue shell. So characters go through these sorts of redesigns all the time. It's not a big deal. Sometimes it, ju it just happens. And who am I to say that maybe a 3D depiction of a blarg is that? And your 2D sprite is limited to what it looks like. And, of course, I have the incorrect power-ups to do this puzzle, this bonus, correctly. I want... Here. How many did I get there? One, two, three one-ups. I think that's the first time I ever, ever got three one-ups from this minigame. Usually it's four or maybe two, one at the most, and eight. Sorry, one at the least, eight at the most when getting one-ups. So, three is an odd and rather difficult number. Now, guys, I just have to say I love this level. It is by far my favorite stage. And the reason why is because it looks like we're outside, right? It looks like we're out with the night sky glittering above and it's it's so peaceful and there's flying night creatures and it's all nocturnal but when I was younger I was super confused because how can we have a night stage we're inside of a cave it's only recently that I had learned that this is still in the cave and the glittering stars you see above Mario in that background are in fact crystals glittering from I don't know what kind of light but from a light source and it's such a cool idea and the fact that it that's it makes it look like you're outside in a night sky makes it so pretty I love beautiful I love beautifully designed stages like this. Speaking of beautifully designed, we are in the harder part of the stage. At this point, bullet bills come flying at you five at a time. 
Though I don't know why they're not flying at me five at a time. Maybe it's because I was at the end. I don't know. I guess I never mentioned this before. But I never talked about the different positions of the gold tape. And what you can claim. Before I get to that, I just have to say... I don't like magic Koopas. And there's always a magic Koopa right there. So the concept of this stage is what you can do is you can escape by doing a spin jump but it's risky because you break the blocks. Or you like the magic Koopa's magic. Break the blocks. I don't like this. Insert death counter. Darn it. I was hoping I wasn't gonna get that death counter going up any higher than necessary. Huh. Thank you for the free life back, considering you're the one who took it from me. Okay. Cam, uh, I'm gonna call him Cammy Koopa at times, and the reason why is because he's kind of the preliminary design of one of Mario's most infamous mage Koopas, Cammy, Cammy Koopa, from the Paper Mario franchise, but also he is, yeah, I'm not gonna get that door. Inside that door is a midway point and a one-up. So if you're tr having difficulties with this stage, like I am, you could get through that door and have a midway point. Unfortunately, um, the Magic Koopa blocked my way of doing that by dis making some of those yellow blocks disappear to get me a running start strong enough to jump high enough to get all those coins out of the way. So it's a, it's a pretty good job on the Magic Koopa's part, but I wanted to show that room. It's a very small room though, so it's not like I you guys missed out on anything. It is helpful, but I mean, if you're if you're skilled enough and fast enough, you can make it. But guys, I'm good at this game, I swear. I may die once or twice, but I'm good at this game, I swear. Woo! Mario, do your dance. Woo! Duck your head! Nod your head! And we made it to Lemmy Koopa! Lemmy Koopa is one of those Koopalings who got a major redesign in the newer editions. He has green hair that kind of looks like a palm tree. It's very odd. And his shell is green instead of his the original yellow. Which is another odd thing. Okay, so I've always wondered what would happen if I hit one of the dummies. And it just goes, makes a sound effect saying that you hit the wrong one. You don't take damage, that was just me running into it. So, if you accidentally hit the wrong Koopaling in that battle, nothing bad happens. It is an interesting puzzle battle because it has a sporadic fireball that bounces off of every corner and if you're not paying attention to the trajectory it could end up hitting you in the back or you could end up jumping into it by accident so it it is interesting and the fluctuation of the pipes also give that battlefield such a unique difficulty curve and with that done we're going to do the next stage and the reason why I was saying we're going to do World 
or start world for in this episode is because if I was just going from point A to point B, I would only have to do two of the five World 4 standard stages to get to the castle. There's Cheese Bridge, which goes from the fortress to the castle, and it has two stages. There's Cheese Bridge and Cookie Mountain, which has one stage each, making a total of two that goes to the castle. Or, if you're taking a shortcut through Star Road, you do the Cheese Bridge area, get Soda Lake, and unlock Star Road. So, no matter what you're doing, in order to get out of World 4, you only have to do two levels. And it's an interesting idea, because it means that there are multiple entrances that are not actually connected to each other. And you can go and like not even see half of the stages in this world. It's really interesting. I like the idea. And I know I've been saying that a lot, but that is because in the last episode I was kind of griping over the idea that I had recorded everything and I've lost all those recordings. And now I have to redo everything. So in this episode I'm trying to be a bit more positive of what I like in this game, not of what I dislike from my recordings. So I'm going to try to do the secret exit. It took me a couple tries the last time. And the reason why is because it's actually a really difficult location to get to. The main idea is that you have to fly and I wanted to show off at least the stage first before attempting. So we're going to fly through the stage. And I was successful on the first time. I, did I say successful? I'm pretty sure I said successful there. So that was the secret exit. You have to fly under the exit post in order to get there. You can't fly over it because if you try to fly over it, you're just going to hit the exit goal and not get any of the bonus stars for hitting the tape. Also, I mentioned I was going to talk about the tape points and how that works. So I'll talk about that maybe now or at the end of the next episode. So depending on how high you hit the tape, you get a certain number of points. The highest number is actually 50 points and that's at the peak of the tape, you can get 40 points immediately under 50 points, and 30 points immediately under 40 points, and then it slowly drops down from 30 by 1 point as you go further down. So I'm really glad that I got the secret exit, I mean, there's gonna be now two dings up there, and I don't like that. But it's better than what I got last time, which was two dings and seven attempts through this stage. As I had to, as I kept repeatedly going through the normal exit, trying to dip down under. So practice makes perfect, guys. Anyways, if you liked this episode, leave a comment in the comment section below about what you thought. Hit that like button and subscribe if you have not for more Super Mario World content. In the next episode, we're going to continue World 4 with Soda Lake, Cookie Mountain, Butter Bridge, and Ludwig von Koopa's Castle. I'll see you guys in the next episode next week. Bye!